right, what's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, the latest physique update from Nick Walker. And this one's stirring up a lot of conversation as we are now just two months away from the 2024 Arnold Classic. A lot of people would like to see Nick compete there. He's a former Arnold Classic champion. He had to sit out the Olympia because of this hamstring injury, but I'm pretty convinced that he's not doing it. So yes, in this update, he looks really good. He's obviously still keeping his conditioning really tight. Midsection looks great. He looks, you know, for a guy that's in the off season and he's not competing anytime soon that we know of, he looks really, really good here. Now, I do think it's noteworthy that in these updates, he doesn't show any back shots where you can clearly see the injured hamstring. So we don't really know how that is developing, how that injury is healing. But I did see him appear on a recent episode of the Cutler cast where he kind of, again, confirmed that he wasn't going to be doing the Arnold Classic. He said he didn't feel like he would be ready. And at the time that that Cutler cast was recorded, and I think it was just like a week ago, um, he said that he still wasn't even fully training hamstrings yet. And he was mostly working on his quads and just not really wanting to risk another hamstring tear while it's still potentially recovering. So the fact that he hasn't even gotten back to fully training them yet, Again, to me, is confirmation. We're not going to see him at either Arnold Classic. Then he also said that him and Matt have not picked a show yet. And it's probably going to be a show later in the season. Now, I've seen people say, you know, people were sending me this update of Nick saying, well, last year he jumped in at the last minute in that Arnold Classic lineup. He wasn't on the initial list. Then he jumped in at the last minute when they upped the prize money. What's this? What's to say he's not going to do that again here? And I guess that is a possibility, but I think Nick has been pretty clear He's not doing it. And yes, I know people point out that he did technically say that at first last year about the Arnold Classic, and then he did end up doing it. But I think this time is a little bit different, especially with that information that he hasn't even fully gotten back to training hamstrings. I think he wants to not only you know stay in really good condition, but I think he wants to actually rebuild what he lost if he lost really much at all. But I do agree with the, the majority consensus here that Nick looks fantastic here. And aside from however his hamstrings might look, it does look like he could compete in the near future. If we if he wasn't injured, these would look like updates, you know, maybe eight weeks out from a show. That That is what this looks like. So I can see why people are getting excited about this. And I wonder, you know, even like the New York Pro, which is in May, I wonder if even that might be too soon. And maybe I, I feel like he would probably do a show closer to the Olympia to give himself like the maximum time to take a little bit of time off, take it easy, not risk any training additional injuries in the hamstrings and really take time to rebuild between now and then and maybe do a show closer to the Olympia and then just kind of have that be a warm-up show for the Olympia. Although I do agree and I, I want to hear what you guys think. Another topic that was brought up in that Cutler cast featuring Nick Walker was the topic of a special invitation and I believe it was Milos that said he thinks that Nick deserves one. I agree with that. I second that. Nick's been top three at the Olympia. He's an Arnold Classic champion. The injury was a circumstance outside of his control. And if you look at the history of the special invitation, whether you like it or not, it does exist. It's been offered in the past for less, I think, significant reasons. It's been offered to guys that have been less of a factor in the Olympia lineup. Kevin Lavroni, for example. Nick is a guy that you know, whether he qualifies traditionally by winning a show or qualifies via special invitation, either way you know he's going to be a factor in that first call-out at the Olympia. It's like a foredrawn conclusion, unless he's completely off. And keep in mind, the year that they offered the special invitation to Big Rami, because he was having, I think, travel issues because of COVID back then, that was the year he won the Olympia. He went from whatever placing he was the prior year, which was not close to winning, and then he won with a special invitation. You could see something like that happen with Nick, and I actually think Nick would be a, a quality candidate for that invitation. And frankly, I think had he been able to do the Olympia this year injury-free, I think he would have been top three, and he would have qualified for next year's Olympia had he competed in the Olympia this past year. So I don't know. I feel like it's just kind of a formality at this point to make Nick compete to qualify when you already know when he does the Olympia, he's going to be right there in the mix of the top guys. But I know it's a hotly contested topic, so I want to hear you guys what you think in the comments below. Does Nick deserve a special invitation or not? And do you still think there's a, a potential that he jumps in the Arnold Classic lineup? I guess anything is possible. Now, next up in the news, kind of correlated to Nick Walker, Samson Dowda posted an interesting update yesterday where he talks about the fact that he apparently had a hamstring injury now three days ago 
what's been described as a minor hamstring tear. I don't even know which leg it is in this update. To me, it's not really noticeable. You can't really tell much difference between the two legs. Um, so it doesn't look like it's anything significant. I don't see any like swelling or real inflammation. And he says he's working on getting it rehabbed to get back to 100% for the Arnold Classic. But I think this is an interesting development because I said this before, but I think I do think it's possible for Samson to beat Hottie. I really do. But I think it has to be all the perfect stars have to align. Samson has to be 110%, nothing off, conditioning 100% on point to rival Hottie Chupin and beat him at this Arnold Classic. But I do think it's possible. But any slight little thing like this, like a hamstring injury that makes Samson slightly off, that could be the difference that makes him lose to Hadi Chupin. I do think, like I said, 110% Samson, an ideal circumstance, great conditioning. He has to be in better condition than the Olympia, that's for sure. Could beat Hadi. But if any little thing is off, that's where Hadi catches these bigger guys. Hadi comes in near flawless every time. Very complete, crazy conditioning, very difficult guy to beat. And he often catches guys that are bigger or freakier or more muscular or maybe even more aesthetic because Hadi is so consistent and rarely off in any instance at all. So while it doesn't seem like this hamstring injury is a big deal for Samson, it could be the difference maker if it affects the balance of his legs at all at this Arnold Classic. And I think it's something to watch when we see him on stage in the UK and the US. Could this be the game changer that allows Hadi to slip in there and win? Because a lot of people are saying Samson really has a shot at this being a really big opportunity for him to potentially beat Hottie outside of the Olympia, win the Arnold Classic again, go on to win the Arnold Classic UK. And by the way, again, if Samson does that, I believe he will have won the most prize money in a 12-month period of any bodybuilder in history. That would put him at about a million dollars in prize money. But like I said, looking at this, I can't really tell any signs of an injury. But can you guys, and do you guys think this will make any difference at the Arnold Classic, or do you think Samson will still be on point? Now, next up in the news, we did get a current physique update from Derek Lunsford, 2024's first update of Derek on the Evagen page, and then shared by Derek on his page as well. Talk about a guy that stays in shape in the offseason. I actually just saw an email, I forget the competition, that Derek has already got another guest posing or appearance scheduled for February out of the country. So again, Derek as Mr. Olympia is really taking the reins as far as being an ambassador, traveling, doing appearances, doing guest posings, and he's about to be a father. And this is why I think Derek fits so well into the role of Mr. Olympia. As an ambassador, he's a guy that stays in shape all year. He improves during the year. He gets bigger, but he's, he's always in shape. You never see him looking fat. You never see him looking off. He's always doing these appearances and guest posings. And you see updates like this where he's got basically a whole year to the next Olympia, and he's still in really good condition for a guy that should be enjoying the holidays and the off season. So Derek is just like the consummate professional. He's the guy that you want to see in this position. He's the guy that you enjoy seeing win because I feel like he embraces all the aspects of being Mr. Olympia. You never see him out of shape. You always see him doing these appearances. You always see him posting on social media. He's got a YouTube channel now where he's posting vlogs all the time. He's always posting on Instagram. Compared to Hottie, when Hottie was champion, no shade to Hottie, but you rarely saw Hottie post updates. You rarely saw Hadi travel. And again, it's kind of a unique situation because of the country that he's from. It's a little bit more difficult to travel to some of the countries that Derek is going to. But the same with Rami. You rarely saw Rami post. You rarely saw Rami travel. So Derek is really just taking this title by the reins and being the ambassador that we wanted for the past three years or so. And again, I think when we point this out, when guys aren't doing that, when a Mr. Olympia isn't traveling and we're complaining and we're saying they never post, we never see them, we never get to meet these guys, never get to take a picture with them, etc. I think we should also point out when they're doing a good job. So every time I see Derek doing something that I think is a good representation of the Mr. Olympia title, I want to point that out as well, because I think that's exactly what he's doing. And I just think he's doing a great job. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today, we got some recent updates where we got to see Flex Lewis's physique next to Big Boy from Strength Cartel. And Flex is actually looking pretty big. Um, you know, he kind of flirted with this idea of maybe a comeback isn't so unrealistic. A couple months ago, he did like a transformation for his 40th birthday. And he's, he's kind of been talking like he, the idea of competing is kind of creeping back into his mind. 
And I think when you see pictures of Flex like this, even though he's been away from the stage for so long, he kind of announced uh, informal retirement. He said he hasn't really been training the way that he used to be. When you see an update like this and he still looks this big, it kind of makes it seem that much more likely that it could happen that we could see Flex back on a competitive bodybuilding stage someday. And again, it's kind of a friendly reminder that 40 is not that old when it comes to professional bodybuilding. Ronnie Coleman was still winning Olympia titles in his 40s. Dexter Jackson was still placing top three at the Olympia in his late 40s. And like I said earlier, anything is possible. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. That's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification icon if you have not already. And as always, I love you guys. appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.